things for sure. It's not going to be as long. As Amen. Amen. Some of us today are a lot closer than what we realize. If you have your Bible, let's go to 1 John chapter 5. First John chapter 5, just want to remind everybody about our camp meeting starting tomorrow night. The Parson family is going to be with us singing. Amen. And uh, Preacher Chris from Monday and Tuesday, and then Preacher Patrick O'Dell Wednesday and Thursday. Listen, we, we, we all know and love Preacher Chris Rumfeld, amen? amen. So uh, make sure you come for that. But I'm telling you, you don't want to miss Preacher Patrick O'Dell, mountain preacher. Yeah. Amen. amen. Just rear back and go at it, amen. First John chapter 5. When you get there, let's stand. I'll start reading in verse 11. First John chapter 5, verse 11. And the Bible says this. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Now listen to this verse. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. And that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Lord, we love you. We come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, I ask your hand to be upon us right now. God, help me, to Lord, to do what I cannot do on my own. I need the Holy Spirit to move in me. I pray, God, you'd move through this church. God, you convict hearts. God, you speak to hearts. God, Lord, I can be preaching on one subject, and the Holy Ghost can pre uh, speak on some another subject. God, have your hand on us right now, God. Move in this church, Lord. And God, if there's one that's not saved, God, please burden their heart. Help them to get on this altar before it's too late. And whatever's done, we'll make sure Jesus gets all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. The question is, can you know that you're saved? Think about that. You, you, you talk to a lot of people. A lot of people say you cannot know that you're saved. A lot of people say you won't know to the very end. Some, some Bible scholars believe that. But I, I, I just feel like that I can know that I'm saved. Amen. The Bible tells us in Job chapter 19, verse 25, For I know that my Redeemer liveth. Amen. If Job knew in the Old Testament, glory to God, you and I can know in the New Testament. Amen. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Paul said, I know. He said, I know in whom I have believed, and I, I know he's able to keep me to that day. Amen. So you and I can know. I believe that uh, one of the reasons that, that John wrote this book, so that people can have a knowledge or a know-so salvation. Uh, uh, that if you read chapter 1, verse 6, and you read chapter 5, verse 13, the Bible says that. He uses the word know 39 times in this little short book. Amen. If you're here today and you don't know that you're saved, this is your service. Right. Amen. If you're here today and there's any, any doubt whatsoever that you're, of your salvation, this is your service. Now, let me go ahead and tell you, I didn't ask you, was you a church member? Come on. That ain't got nothing to do with it. I, I've been to conferences before, Brother David, and you've heard me say this. I've been to conferences before uh, uh, and seen preachers go down to an altar and get saved. They say, Brother Charlie, they say they were, they've been raised in church. They, they knew all the right things to say. They, they, they went to school at a seminary somewhere, and, and they were taught how to preach, but they had never come to a saving knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, I want to preach about how, how we can know that we're saved. Number one, there's got to be a conversion. Amen. First uh, John chapter 5, verse 1, Whosoever believeth that Jesus, Christ, Jesus is the Christ, is born of God, and everyone that loveth him, and that begat the loveth him, that is also begat of him. So some of the questions that I, I want to I start off with uh, and ask you this morning, and, and I want you to listen to me, okay? Number one, has there ever been a defining or de a definite clear moment in your life where you trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? 
I said this before. I said most men can take us back to when they killed their first deer. Most girls can take you back to when they had their first kiss. But if you can't take me back to a time that you got on your knees and you asked God to save you, I doubt your salvation. Uh, that you ought to be able to, you might not can remember the day and the time, but you ought to be able to take me back to the place. Brother David says this a lot in Sunday school, riding down the road in a pickup truck, glory to God. How many know where you were when you got saved? How many remember that day when you got saved? If you can't tell me a definite date, there's something wrong. Now, when you had your experience, was it by the Bible? That's another question you have to ask. See, a lot of times you go to a church and they'll take you upstairs, they'll take you back there, and they'll let you fill out a card, and they'll tell you everything's all right. That ain't the way you get saved. You got to understand something. The Bible, the, the Bible tells us how we are supposed to get saved. Did you come to the place where you recognize and you acknowledge your sin before God? If you didn't recognize you were a sinner and you didn't acknowledge your sin before God, you are not saved. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter uh, 3, verse 10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. You got to understand, so you got to realize you're a sinner before you can ever get saved. And if you've never come to that knowledge that you are a sinner, and I'm telling you right now, we all got to come to that knowledge that we are a sinner. The Bible says there's none good. That means all of us, Adam, are created right in that, in that area. All of us. There's none good. Amen. See, the problem is a lot of times we, we live good moral lives and, and we think we're all right. And we, you know, just because you've been in church all your life, that ain't got nothing to do with it. Just because you don't drink, that ain't got nothing to do with it. Just because you don't cuss, that ain't got nothing to do with it. Just because you don't commit adultery and you don't sin, that ain't got nothing to do with it. The Bible says we're all, hey, we're born in sin, and I'm telling you right now, if we don't get our name written in the Lamb's Book of Life and covered by the blood of Jesus, we all go to hell. Amen. So we got to understand something. If you didn't get saved the way the Bible says, did you recognize the consequences of your sin? The consequences of your sin is that you were separated from God, according to Isaiah chapter 59. The consequences of your sin is that you've been separated from God, and you'll spend eternity in hell if you don't get things right. That's the consequences. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God mm, is eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. We've got to understand something, folks. We've got to get to that place where we admit we're a sinner. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We confess our sins. You've got to tell him. I, I, you know, I, I hear a lot of people, oh, Lord, you know, oh, Lord, you know this. Let me tell you something. You ain't got to confess your sin to me because I, I, I can't do nothing about your sin. But you've got to confess your sin to Jesus. You've got to lay it all on the line and say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know this. And, I know, but, and when you get that, then you can be saved. Amen. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 13, for whosoever shall come upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you got saved like I'm preaching about right now, there ought to be no doubt in your mind that you're saved. There ought to be no doubt. Hey, I didn't say we're perfect. Glory to God. Ain't none of us going to be perfect. I'm telling you, you're going to fall on your face, but get back up. Keep right on going. But you ought to know that you know that you know that you're saved. Now, there was a con there's got to be a conversion, but there's also got to be a change. You can go through the motions, you can say all you want to, but if there ain't no change, there ain't no salvation. If you're still drinking, there ain't no salvation. If you're still cussing, there ain't no salvation. If you're still happy in your sin, there ain't no salvation. I don't care what nobody tells you on TV. There's got to be a change. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. We will have a desire to live right. We will have a desire to do right. We'll have a desire to talk right. We'll have a desire to walk right. I, like I said while ago we all make mistakes but your life should not be defined by sin when you get saved 
We all sin. We all, we all make a mistake. Brother Tony, we all fall, every one of us. Yeah. But when you fall, you ought to realize, I, 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 I've made this. this. This is where I messed up. I mean, Jesus, you didn't let me down. I let you down. And what you need to do, 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You ask, you ask him to forgive you, you get yourself back up, and you try to walk straight again. Amen. There's got to be a change. Somebody that says they got saved and they're still living that old life, that's a lie. That's a lie. There's got to be a conversion. There's got to be a change. But don't you notice something? There will be charity. There will be love. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 9 through 11, He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he goeth, because that darkness has blinded his eyes. Understand something. John refers to this multiple times in the book of John. Chapter 2, verse 9 through 11. Chapter 3, verse 14 through 15. Chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. Chapter 4, verse 11 and 12. Chapter 4, verse 20 and 21. John says you got to love each other. Don't tell me you're a Christian and you hate the one sitting on the other side of the church. Don't tell me you're a Christian and you still got resentment in your heart. Don't tell me you're a Christian and you don't like this one and you don't like that one. I, I might not like their ways, but I've got to love everybody, amen? And understand something, when you get saved and you realize how, how Jesus can love a dirty, rotten sinner like you, it ought to be able for, ought, to, ought to help us to be able to love each other. I love David. I love Tony. I love, I love Larry. Understand something. I got, Greg, I got people that's done me wrong. You do too. And guess what? I love them. Amen. Because I guarantee you, nobody's ever done me wrong like I did Jesus wrong. Nobody's ever, nobody's ever done to me like I, Brother Donald, like I did to Jesus. And if Jesus can still love me after all the stupid mess I've done in my life, I ought to be able to love everybody else because the Bible tells me that. You will love the brother. How is this love going to manifest itself? Oh, this is where it's going to get quiet. How is this love going to manifest itself? Number one, this love is going to manifest itself with a desire to fellowship with Christians. In other words, you're going to want to come to church. Forsaking not the assembling of ourselves together. You're going to want to come to church on Sunday morning. You should want to come to church on Sunday night. You should want to come to church on Wednesday night. When we have camp meeting, you should want to come to church on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night. Amen. You should want to come to Master's Men. You should want to. You should desire to come to Ladies All Center. We ought to have a desire to be in fellowship with one another. Like I said, I, I love David. I'm going to tell you, I, I think the world, I mean, David's one of my best friends in the world. I like being around David. David's a fun guy to be around. See, some of y'all come to church on Sunday morning, and you don't never come back. You don't know what kind of nuts we got in this church. <laughs> I mean, I'm just telling you, you come, you get around David and, and, and Robert and, and Tony, and man, we have a good time. Amen. That's proof right there that we can love each other, and you ain't got to be out there in the hell hole of this world to have a good time and smile and laugh and enjoy each other's fellowship. Amen. I love these guys and I believe these guys love me. We ought to have a desire. We ought to have concern for the welfare of others in the family of God. I'm up here getting ready to preach. Deborah wants to be anointed. Sister Nikki stands up. Her mom's in the beach area in pain. That concerns me. Because if she's hurting, I'm hurting. I ought to have a concern for the well-being of everybody in God's house. Not necessarily in this house. I, I, I love everybody here, but I ought to have some concern for those next door. Amen. And I'm telling you right now, folks, I, I, I got a preacher friend of mine in, in, in Florence Hospital. Brother Jerry Burr's at home right now with, with having, going through a hard time. And we, Josh is at home. We ought to have a concern for these. We ought to call them up and let them know we love them. Let them know we're praying for them. If you've got that in your life, then you know you're saved. We ought to have a concern.
There ought to be a concern when we offend others. There ought to be a real concern when we offend others. Because let me tell you something, it's going to happen. Mike, as good a fellow as you are, and I'm telling you right now, you're a good man. You, you one of the quietest men I know. Mike's, Mike's just easy going. I don't know if nobody, I, uh, Brother Ralph, I don't know if nobody else I know that's as easy going as Mike is. And I know as hard as it is for some of us to believe there's somebody that, at some point down in history that Mike has offended. And I know y'all, y'all know as easy go a fella as I am. <laughs> I've said this before. I remember one Wednesday night. I was getting ready. I was studying, getting ready to preach. And I had said something to a man, Brother Robert, that was lost and on drugs. And what I said was true. Brother Tony, the Lord laid it on my heart. You go apologize to that man. Amen. And you better apologize to that man before you get in that pulpit tonight and, tr- and preach. So you know what I did? I went and apologized to that man. Because I had offended that man. Let me tell you something. You're not perfect. And you're going to say things and do things that offend people. That's life. We ought to have a concern when we offend somebody. And there ought to be a desire to reconcile. And I'm going to say this. If you get mad in church and just quit and go find you another church, you ain't trying to reconcile. Amen. You ain't trying to reconcile. What you're doing is you got mad, and I'm going to go over there, and I'm going to cool off, and then I'm, I might come back later on and ask you to forgive me. No, that, that's not reconciliation. Folks, I'm just telling you, if me and Brother Robert have a falling out, I'm going to Robert's house tonight. We're going to work this thing out before any... I, that, that's the way we ought to be in our life. That's the way Christians ought to be. The Bible says that you take somebody with you and you do your best to try to work it out. That's when you know you're saved, when you're trying to line up, Brother David, and do it like the Bible says do it. There's going to be a conversion. There's going to be a change. There's going to be charity. But glory to God, we got a companion. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 13, Hereby know that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. How many of y'all realize you got somebody with you everywhere you go? See, it's real easy, Brother Barry, for us to say that. It's real easy, uh, Brother Ed, for us to say, Oh, the Holy Spirit goes with me everywhere I go. How about when you're turning on things you ain't got no business turning on? How about when you go to places you ain't got no business going? You better realize he's still with you. And he's watching everything we do. But glory to God, I like it when, I'm, when, when I can come into God's house and I feel that companion, Brother Skip. I, I like it when, when, when the choir's singing and you can feel something stirring in your heart. That's when you, glory to God, that's when you know you're saved. Amen. When you got that, when you West, when you when you know, I, I'm talking about. Listen, when I when I was lost, I I I, that, I, I like I like doing things, and I I I get excited about things, you know. And uh, and that that's understand that's life. I love playing ball. I get excited about ball. I get excited about basketball. I get excited about baseball. I get excited about uh, uh, watching a movie or whatever. But I can come to church, glory to God, and sit down on this pew right here, and I, I feel somebody move in beside me. I feel somebody that sat right there. I can be going down the road now listening to some good gospel music or listening to some preaching. And I got somebody that'll get in the truck with me, glory to God. That's what I'm talking about. I got a companion everywhere I go. He goes. Everything I do, he does. Everything I see, he sees. And every word I say, he hears. Let me ask you a question. Do you know you're saved? Do you know? That you're saved. Well, preacher, I'm lining up with most everything you preached. That's like standing before Jesus at the judgment seat. Well, Lord, I I did most everything in that Bible. No, everything I preached this morning, that will be there if you're saved. Everything. You can't have one at this point and not take that point. You can't have a conversion and not have a change. 
You can't have a conversion and have a change and not have charity. Amen. Let me ask you a question. How many, I want you to bow your heads with me right now. Brother Robert, come back and sing that last song again.